One of the little known features of Windows is the Credential Manager. Now, this isn't a feature of Windows that's new to Windows 7. It has been around for a while, but in Windows 7, it's worth taking a look at since now, at least in my opinion, it's something that regular folks like me might consider actually using. In fact, it's something that you've most likely been using anyway, but you probably haven't been aware of it. You see, sometimes when you visit a website that requires a username and a password, or in other words, it requires credentials, Internet Explorer can give you the ability to save those credentials to make it quicker to access that site again. Well, it's these sorts of usernames and passwords, these credentials that get stored in this credential manager's vault. Now, you might be thinking, well, this sounds cool, so how come I didn't know about this earlier? Well, I don't think that it's really been a heavily publicized feature of Windows, that's for sure, but it hasn't exactly been hidden either. It's really just one of those features that has been there for a while. It's used a lot, but you probably never realized you were using it. So let's go and take a look at the Credential Manager. So we'll go and click on Start. We'll fire up the Control Panel and we'll click User Accounts. And down here, we'll open up the Credential Manager. Now, since this is a brand new installation of Windows 7, we don't have any credentials saved. So to add something to this window, you can see we've got a couple of methods. Now we could add in a credential manually by clicking Add a Windows Credential. We could add in a certificate-based credential or just a generic one. So if you do want to add them in manually, you just click the appropriate link. So let's just add, say, a Windows credential here. And then we'll need to enter in the address of the target, which will either be a network address or a host, or it will be an internet URL. And finally, we'll need to enter in a username and a password, and then simply click OK. And that's it, really. There's not that much to it. Now, you can go through that process manually if you like, or we can get some sort of application to populate these credentials into our vault for us. And in all honesty, it's most likely that over the course of your general day-to-day -day activity, you'll start populating this vault that way. So for example, let's go and click on Start. And I'm going to launch a remote desktop connection here. And I'm going to try and remote desktop to my domain controller, which is simply at 10.32.0.2. And we'll hit connect. Now I'm going to connect using the account Jorkus Administrator. And we'll need to enter in the password, of course. So we'll do that now. And we'll click OK. In fact, before we do that, one thing I forgot to do there was check the box to remember my credentials. Of course, it's this checkbox that will force our credentials to be stored in our credential manager. So we'll check the box. We'll click OK. And in a moment, our connection to the domain controller should be complete, and we're going to see our desktop appear. Okay, it seems to be taking its time, but there it is. Now we can just minimize this. We don't really need it. And we'll come back to our credential manager here. And you can see that nothing has changed yet, since what we'll have to do is we'll have to hop out of this application and come back. So we'll go back to our control panel here, user accounts, and we'll open up the credential manager. Now this time, under our Windows credentials, you can see we've got this one entry. It's for a terminal services connection to 10.32.0.2. And of course, it's been created today. Now, if we expand this by clicking this little down arrow icon here on the right, we'll be able to see a little bit more information about this connection. OK, so we know that when I created the connection to our domain controller here, or I used the administrator account. Of course, our password here is hidden from view for security purposes, but the fact that we have these credentials stored in our vault means now we don't have to enter in our username and password. We can just authenticate by passing these credentials from the vault over to the server that we want to connect to. Now, really, this isn't anything new. We've been able to do this sort of thing in Windows Vista. So what makes Windows 7's implementation of this credential manager different to other versions that we've seen in earlier versions of Windows? Well, the main difference that Windows 7 offers is now we're able to back up and restore this vault if we need to. After all, once you've had your computer up and running for a while, 
there's probably going to be several websites and several RDP connections like this one and servers and applications and things that you've accessed all of which require authentication. And to make your life a little less complicated you've checked the box there to have Windows remember your password to make revisiting those places just that little bit quicker. Now the last thing you're going to have to want to do is to enter in all those passwords again especially if you've forgotten them which can often be the case so being able to back up and restore your passwords mightn't sound like a big deal but it really is. So to back up your vault we'll click backup vault. Now, this starts up a little wizard where we'll need to tell it where we want to store our backup and unlike so many of these wizards we've come to expect we can't actually enter in a manual path here which is unusual so we we'll have to click the browse button. Now this is defaulting to my documents library here and that's fine I'm just going to give it a name I'll call it backup that's original we'll click save all right well there's the path now being populated for us so we'll click next and here you can see that we're now asked to press Control alt delete to continue our backup using the secure desktop now for those of you who don't know what the secure desktop is you can watch our video on user account control where we'll talk more about it there so we'll hold down Control alt delete and that brings up the secure desktop and here we'll need to enter in a password for our backup. So we'll do that now. I'll type in a password and of course we'll need to confirm it by typing it in again and we'll click next and we're done. So we'll click finish. Our backup was successful and now we've returned to our normal desktop. So let's try now and restore our backup. So first let's initiate some sort of change so that we can see that our restore actually worked. So underneath our RDP credentials here let's just choose here to remove this from the vault and we'll say yes. All right it's gone so now you'll also note that we can see up here that our backup option has gone since we don't have any credentials stored in our vault here so it stands to reason that we don't need to back it up. So our only option here is to restore a vault so we'll click restore. We'll need to tell the wizard where our backup file is so we'll click browse okay there's our backup file in our documents library I'm going to select that we'll click open then we'll click next we'll need to press Control alt delete again and that'll return us to the secure desktop so we can restore these logon credentials so we'll do that now and then we'll enter in the password that we provided for the file we'll click next our credentials have been restored so we'll click finish and again we'll need to jump out of the credential manager applet and come back in and there's our credentials back as they once were. So in this video we've talked about the credential manager which is a place for storing your credentials your usernames and your passwords. Like I said at the start of this video the credential manager itself really isn't a new thing but now that we're able to back up and restore our vault it's certainly much more of a usable utility and something that you might like to take a closer look at. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for watching.